The largest of all extinct sharks, Otodus megalodon, has woven its way into the public consciousness as what is essentially a great white shark on steroids. But as the debate rages about what this mysterious monster actually looked like, this image is slowly morphing into something longer and slenderer. Meanwhile, the so-called Cretaceous sharp-nosed shark, another extinct sea monster, is gaining traction. Not only was this extinct shark species actually beefy, but it also took on some of the most frightening reptilians in the Cretaceous oceans, mosasaurs. This was a shark that hunted dinosaurs too, and they will have given Megalodon a run for his money. In this video, we'll be diving to the ominous depths of Crotoxyrhina mantelli, an apex predator of the Cretaceous, and we'll touch on what a Crotoxyrhina versus Megalodon battle may have looked like. Finally, stick around for an honorable mention of one of Megalodon's lesser known relatives and a special insight into Crotoxyrhina evolution. But first, what happened to Meg? Megalodon is one of recent prehistory's most captivating killers combining the Jaws-inspired social phobia of sharks with the Spielbergian gigantism of Jurassic Park. But sharks, being as they are cartilaginous fishes, may as well be made of paper for all the good it does to the fossil record. All that is, except their teeth, and a few pieces of jaws and perhaps a handful of vertebrae. And from these slim pickings, we have to infer the entirety of the rest of the animal. But Meg came about pretty late on the scene. Meanwhile, back when dinosaurs still roamed the land and giant mosasaurs patrolled the oceans, it was the Jinsu shark that was in charge. The two species are separated by around 50 million years of history. But could this shark have been the real Jaws? And what would Megalodon have thought about all this had it been around back then? Let's break it down. Jinsu was a Cretaceous shark known as Crotoxhirina mantelli. And while it's thought to have been a mackerel shark, it's not yet certain whether this was a relative of the white shark or more closely related to the stranger-looking thresher sharks. But whatever it was, it was big. Jinsu was the largest of four described species in this genus, and it was found all over the world where there was temperate and subtropical water. It measured at least eight meters in length, possibly more, and it's thought to have weighed around five tons. It was capable of handling brackish water too, and it may have swum inland like modern day bull sharks. The shark gets its nickname, Jinsu, from a popular brand of knife, and that's because of its very special teeth. As with all prehistoric sharks, teeth are most of what we have to go on with Jinsu. But of all sharks, this species has the best represented dental fossils on record. At up to eight centimeters long, its teeth were also slanted, razor sharp, and plentiful. At the back and sides of its mouth, these teeth became curved for slicing chunks out of things, and at the front, they were unserrated stabbing blades for brutal piercing attacks. Its mouth was home to more than 150 of these long slicing and stabbing teeth, which would obviously have been used to cut into the flesh of very large animals. The stomach contents of some of the Crotoxyrhina mantelli fossils have also given us clues into what it ate, and these suggest it would have feasted on other large predators around at the time including the five-meter-long bony fish, Xyphectinus. Remarkably, from one very well-preserved fossil, it appears to have had superior vision, and this is based on the large orbitals in the skull. As expected, fossil remains of this shark have left a lot to be desired, but there is one other part of sharks that we haven't mentioned yet that often survives fossilization. It's poop. Coprolite is the geologist's way of avoiding the phrase fossilized shit, but that's exactly what it is. And coprolite from Crotoxyrhina shows the remains of various other animals that it ate, including even pterosaurs, although these may have been scavenged rather than plucked dramatically from the air. Remains of hadrosaurs also show signs of predation by Crotoxyrhina, and this lends credence to the old image of hadrosaurs as semi-aquatic dinosaurs, though this idea has been challenged recently. Whether or not it scavenged, Jinsu would have been primarily an active predator, and an aggressive one at that. Pliosaurs, turtles, and other sharks were on its menu, as it would have been perhaps the most dominant predator in the Cretaceous marine environment. But there were other monsters in those waters as well, giants that would have provided both competition and prey to the larger Jinsu sharks. Mosasaurs were a fantastic group of Cretaceous squamates. This is the order of reptiles that today contains snakes and lizards. 
In fact, there's a lot to talk about them being ancestral, or at least very closely related to modern monitor lizards, like the Komodo dragon. While monitors can swim exceptionally well, they are primarily terrestrial, or at best semi-aquatic, whereas mosasaurs were fully marine reptiles, and far, far larger. Even the extinct Megalania would have made a nifty little lunch for a giant mosasaur, the largest of which could have reached 17 meters long, perhaps even more, and would have weighed up to 10 tons. These were some of the largest marine reptiles ever to do it, and Jinsu saw them as food. In fact, before Jinsu showed up on the scene, the oceans it came to dominate were teeming with large predators like this, and its presence coincided with the decline in at least some of them. The 9-meter pliosaur, Megacephalosaurus, may have gone extinct specifically because of just how good Jinsu was at killing. Jinsu brought with it bad company. The radiation of sharks just like this one would have contributed to the pressure on late Cretaceous marine reptiles before any hint of an asteroid was on the table. It was unlikely that these sharks would take on the largest mosasaurs, but they sure would have put a dent in them while they were still young. One thing that made Jinsu so effective as a predator was just how fast it could swim. Hydrodynamic models based on the shark's fossils have thrown up some surprising results. They suggest the species was able to reach top speeds of around 70 kilometers an hour. Unfortunately, given that the fastest creatures in the ocean are more restricted by cavitation than by drag, it's rare, if not impossible, for them to ever reach speeds this high. For fish in particular, after around 54 kilometers an hour, cavitation risks damage to some of the more delicate membranes like the fins, and this alone is enough to persuade some researchers of a hard limit to the speed of animals in the ocean. Cetaceans, being more robust and generally tougher than fish, may be able to tolerate bursts of speeds this high, but it's got to be uncomfortable at best, and it's very unlikely that most animals would be able to sustain speeds above this limit. Having said this, the cavitation limit varies with depth, so it would have affected deep water hunters a lot less than those in the shallow levels, Regardless, the models for Jinsu suggest a very fast animal, and this, along with models of its jaw mobility, show us that this would have been a sneaky ambush predator that perhaps engaged in ram feeding like some of the modern sharks do today. Interestingly, this is in stark contrast to some of the recent developments in Megalodon physiology. So how would it have stood up to its indirect protege 50 million years later? In light of the recent adjustments to Megalodon's body type, the image of its hunting style has also changed. Far from being an ambush predator, it's looking more like this monster shark could have instead chased down its quarry. That's good news for Jinsu, because all other things equal, Meg had about 55 tons on our Cretaceous friend. And Jinsu would have also had less stamina than the longer pursuit predator, so it would have to get its attack in quickly. In most cases, this size difference would be insurmountable, but if Jinsu could get an ambush on the Megalodon, it's possible that the extra burst speed, slicing jaws, and element of surprise could have given it a leg up. But Megalodon possibly had the highest bite force of any known animal ever, even more than the infamous T-Rex by about four times. So if it landed just one of those on Jinsu, it would be over in a snap. In a hypothetical clash, the odds are still overwhelmingly in Megalodon's favor. The Jinsu shark had wicked teeth and outstanding speed, but Megalodon's bulk, power, and devastating bite force would have made it a very short battle. Of course, this would never happen, not least because sharks are lovers, not fighters, but mostly because Otodus Megalodon was a master of the Miocene just a few million years ago. While Jinsu evolved and expired alongside the last of the non-avian dinosaurs towards the end of the Cretaceous, and in a strange twist, its demise may have come from the revenge of the Mosasaurs it once hunted. The youngest Jinsu fossils to date are around 83 million years old, and these are found in Australia, but the ones in North America and Europe are around 2 million years older than this, which suggests that Jinsu went extinct over a long period of time. The causes of this are unknown, but it does coincide with the rise of a very new generation of predator, the Tylosaurs. These were some of the largest Mosasaurs ever known, and they grew up to around 14 meters long. Their teeth, while they were different from that of the sharks, were also designed for slicing into large marine vertebrates. This would have put them in direct competition with Jinsu, and along with the rise of similar predators, it could have been what pushed them to extinction. 
On the other hand, the decline of Jinsu could have conversely aided in the rise of its competitors, so there's no easy consensus around which one came first. We're pretty much coming to the end of this video now, but as promised, we wanted to give a shout out to an unsung hero of the Otodus genus, Otodus chubutensis. Just before we get to that though, if you've enjoyed this, you could do us a big favor and hit that like button and subscribe for the next one that will be coming up soon. Now while Jensu was extinct well before Megalodon arrived on the scene, there was another shark around at the same time as Meg that was perhaps similar. Now this was a close relative of Megalodon and it lived somewhere between 28 and 5 million years ago, give or take. The shark was around 10 to 13 meters long, much closer in size to Jensu. And like Jensu, this would have been a predator of large vertebrates, this time mammals, including the raptorial sperm whales around at the time. Some remains of these whales indicate that Chubutensis may have gone straight for their heads to kill them. But it wasn't just mammals that they hunted. Unlike Megalodon, they had small cusplets on their 10 centimeter long teeth, which is essentially more of a gripping tooth surface. Much better for slippery food like fish. These cusplets would have been more prominent in their smaller ancestors and gradually reduced until they would ultimately disappear as Chubutensis evolved into its final form. The coolest thing about Chubutensis is that it's possible it never went extinct. Well, by any discrete measure anyway. Otodus Chubutensis is thought to have evolved into the much larger Otodus Megalodon. And the rest is history. That's all we've got for this video. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one.